Hello everyone, this is Julia. Thank you so much for joining me on my craft room adventures, and happy Easter to those of you who celebrate. Today I have an inside shadow box card to share with you, and I really hope you enjoy it. First, I started out by stamping all of my images onto Nina Solarite cardstock, and I cut them out using my brother's scan and cut. First, I'm starting out by coloring the little chick. I'm using Y21, Y11, and Y00. Just adding the Y21 in my shadow areas, blending that out with the Y11, going back in with the Y21 for a second layer, then the Y11, and then blending everything out with the Y00. And now I'm bringing in some YR shadows, uh, colors for the beak, and I'm using YR02 and YR00 for the beak and the feet. I'm using some very light cool grays for my bunnies because I want them to be mostly white. So I'm just using C0 as my darkest shade, C00, and then blending that out with a blender. I'm not going to show coloring of all the bunnies because I colored them all the same. I brought in a little bit of C3 for the nose. And now for my cool grays uh, for the bucket, I'm using C3, C1, and C0. And for my for the little stump of the tree and also for the brush and the little painter's brush that the bunny is holding, I'm using E35, E33, and E31. Just going in with the E35 along the wood grain pattern that the stamp created and then blending that out with E33 and finally E31. Now using the same color combo on the brush handles. And also on the bristles on the brush. Now it's time to color in my fairies. Um, as you can see, I stamped out two, but I only had room for one. Um, so that's why I'm just showing, you know, parts of the coloring that ended up on the card. For my hair, I'm using E33 and E31. And I'm really not really terrible at coloring hair. I have no idea how to do it. I really, really need to practice because I tend to end up with, you know, helmet hair. But you know, still learning, so it's all good. <laughs> the images are so cute that even helmet hair doesn't doesn't hurt them, so it's all good. Just going in with the E33 for a second layer and then the E31 again. For my skin tone, I'm using E11 as my darkest shade, blending that out with E00 and then with the E000. For the dress on the fairy that ended up on my card, I'm using some BG shades, BG01, then BG11, and BG000. Just blending those back and forth, and for the fairy wings, I will also be using the BG000. Now up next is a fairly crazy part. On Facebook, I read that somebody used actual like makeup blush to add the flush to the cheeks of their colored images and I could never get it to have that soft faded look with markers so I tried it just used a blush that I wasn't really using and a q-tip and it really works I love it it gives just this soft blush look like it's really blended out totally in love with it I have no idea who posted it so I'm sorry I can't give credit there but awesome idea I love it so, crazy part's over, <laughs> and I'm going in with uh, some greens, the GO2, G00, and G000 for the greenery on my card. Just going in with a G00, a G, G00, sorry, as uh, the darkest shade, blending that out with the G00, 
and then the triple zero as the highlight shade. Also, there are these big flowers that I intended to use on the card, but for some reason, when I'm picking out the images I want to add to a scene, in my head, it seems that I plan out a, like a letter-sized card, and then I end up with lots of images that I really have no space for. So that's why all of these are there, the added fairies and everything, but there was no room, so I will use them on another card. Just blending the colors back and forth. I'm using some YRs, YR02, YR00, and YR000 for the insides of the flowers, and just using the Y21, Y11, and Y00 for the flowers. For the others, I just added some W00 uh, around the petals, just to give them a tiny bit of shading because I just wanted to leave the flowers white. Now I'm moving on to the rest of my images. I'm using the same yellow combination as I did before for one of the birds, the Y21, Y11, and Y00. And again with the YR02 for the beak. And the second one is a little blue bird with a BO2, B00, and B000. I used the same E markers as I did before for the bodies of the butterflies, the E35 and the E33. And now I'm just blending in the Y00 with the RV000 and RV10, just to give a little bit of a faded look to my butterflies. This one I'm just using the RV markers. And for the last one as well. So I have two one with a pink to white fade, uh, pink to yellow fade, and two just pink ones. Same markers for the big Easter egg that the bunny is coloring. RV10 as my darkest shade, and then the RV000. I wanted to keep those colors pretty pastel, so I'm not doing a whole lot of shading. I added the same color to the paintbrush and also the little paintbrush that the bunny is holding that's coloring the egg, but I will figure out how to, you know, make that stand out more later. Again, using the same colors for some of my Easter eggs. Now I'm moving on to the violets, V01 and V000. Again with the yellows like I did before, but I just skipped the y uh, Y21, so just Y11 and Y00. My blues are B00 and B000. Again, same shades. And for my last egg, I'm using some greens, which is the G O O and the G triple zero. Now I added everything to like a lid so that I could just place it somewhere else to dry. I added lots of shimmer pen, the Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen and the glitter gloss version, just to the the flowers, the butterflies, the fairy wings. Everything that kind of had paint on it, like the bucket, the paintbrush, and of course all of the Easter eggs. And now I'm using some Nouveau Crystal Glaze to add some shine to the elements. Usually I embellish my card at the end, but since this is like a 3D 
pop-up card I always find it's very difficult to do later uh, so I just went ahead and did it now and then left it to dry off camera I will also add a little bit of the unicorn stickles to the little paintbrush the big paintbrush and also the inside of the bucket of paint now moving on to ink blending I'm using two panels that are a2 sized and I'm just ink blending them with regular distressings. They're all Bristol. And I'm using sponge sugar, shaded lilac, tumbled glass, and cracked pistachio. One, I'm ink blending with all four colors. And the third, I'm just using the sponge sugar, uh, the shaded lilac, and tumbled glass. Because for the front panel, I will be adding a hill that's, uh, or that will be uh, ink blended with cracked pistachio, so there is no real point in adding it down there. For the inside panel, I wasn't sure if with the 3D effect it was visible, so I just added the cracked pistachio at the bottom. I'm just blending the colors back and forth until I'm happy with the blend. This really took me a while because they don't blend that well naturally, but it ended up working out fine. Uh, at the end, I will also spray both panels with the Sukineko Shimmer Spritz, which gives just such a gorgeous shine. The only downside of this one is that you can't really get like a super smooth mist. You will always have like little droplets on your project, which I don't really like, but it, it's sparkly, so I'll deal with it. Now going in with a cracked pistachio for the bottom layer. And for time's sake, because this is already a really long video, I'm just showing the ink blending for one of the panels. I die cut one of the Lawn Fawn Wavy Banners and I'm ink blending that one with sponge sugar and also at the uh, very ends of it some shaded lilac. As you can see I left it in the like sp scrap piece of cardstock. I just added some post-it tape to the back because I always find it easier to ink blend and to stamp on when I have a place for the magnet to hold. So that's why it's still in there. For the treetops, I'm using some cracked pistachio, evergreen bough, and pine needles. I'm ink blending all three the same way, and now I'm just adding some splatters of the evergreen bough and the pine needles. Off camera, I die cut the Hello Bluebird spooky scene die twice. I did want to add the treehouse, but there really wasn't any room. So I'm just using some old paper and freight burlap to ink blend the trees. And for the hills, I'm using Cracked Pistachio and Evergreen Bow. I also used the uh, ink blend at the hill of the spooky scene exactly the same way. Now I'm adding a frame that the spooky scene cuts. And I'm just, uh, since I cut it out of Bristol, I'm just adding that to the scene. But my card base will be made out of Lawn Fawn Fog cardstock. So I die cut the scene, since I die cut the scene twice, I also added a frame in the fog color. Here you can see the gorgeous shine of the shimmer spritz. Now I'm just adding the elements of the spooky scene that the die cuts with liquid glue just to the background. Just figuring out the placement for the treetops. I also just added those in with liquid glue. Usually I would use foam tape, but since the because of the inside shadow box, the card already has quite a bit of bulk. I didn't want to add too much more to it. Now I'm adding the frame and the uh, fog colored cardstock, just to have everything match with the card base. And from the Field My Stamp set, I'm also adding these little grassy pieces to add some interest. Now for the decoration for the images for my front scene, 
I'm adding the little bunny with a chick and also two flowers and for the time being just the butterfly. I will be adding some, or two butterflies, I will be adding some Easter eggs later. Now for the card base and the mechanism. I have uh, just a piece of four colored cardstock that I cut in half. So I have two pieces that are eight and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm just scoring the first one at five and a half, just for a regular sized card base. And I left this piece, uh, this part of the video in, in real time, just so that you can really see how it all comes together. So it's five and a half, and now I need to cut off half an inch off one of the sides. You'll see me actually cut off a quarter of an inch because I got that wrong, but you do need to, I, I will do a half inch later. But you do need to cut off half an inch. Nope, that should be at five. Just so you know. <laughs> that's when I realized that that's not how it's supposed to look. Also trying to make it straight. That's what I realized. So for reference, the front part of the card base is five and a half. The back part of the card base is five. There we go. That's how it's supposed to look. Now I'm moving on to my second piece, which is also four and a quarter by 11 inches long. And here you need to place three score lines, one at half an inch, the next at five and a half, just like the center of a normal card base, and the third one at six inches and that will create the inside shadow box. Just to make sure it all fits together nicely at the end, I do cut a little slither off the longest piece that doesn't have like the short score line. Just a tiny bit, but then it all just works better. Now for the X part is where you want to add the adhesive, I just, just so that it's easier to see. And next to the short X, you want to cut the window for your card. I'm just using the outside in stitched rectangle stackables by Lawn Fall. Just adding some poster tape and running that through my die cut machine. And there we have the opening for a shadow box. Now I'm just folding along the score lines that we did at half an inch, five and a half, and six inches, reinforcing them with my bone folder. And there we have the box. I also die cut a hill that is five and a half inches long and scored at a quarter of an inch and five and a quarter of an inch. There we go, scoring at a quarter of an inch and five and a quarter of an inch, and that will go inside of our shadow box. Now it's time to assemble our card. This is the piece where we cut off the half an inch on the back and this will be the back side of a card. I added some score tape to the places where I added the X. 
as you can see there. At first I, started, uh, I thought I would start with the back, but then I thought it would be easier to add the front part first. So I'm just removing the backing paper. And now I'm lining it up with the inside of the card. Just make sure that it's straight and everything lines up nicely because otherwise your card will end up being all wonky. You want to take a guess how I found that out? <laughs> just, so just make sure it's all lined up straight before you close the card. And then to adhere it, you just close the lid of the front of the card. Pressing it down firmly so that the tape hits. I'm using a bone folder to just make sure it sticks. And there you can already see how it's going to look. Now, again, putting everything down flat, removing the backing paper of the score tape. Making sure it's straight again. And then closing the back of the card. Oh, not quite. There we go. Again, pressing down firmly using a bone folder to reinforce it. Just so that the mechanism won't come apart. And there we go. That's our card base with a mechanism finished. Once you've done it, once it really isn't isn't hard at all. Since I've implemented an A2 sized panel, I needed to cut down my inside background. And I'm just taking about half an inch off. A little bit slither more because the back side is half an inch shorter, uh, but just so that it's not like cramped in there. Just adding some tape runner to the back and placing it inside my shadow box. That shimmer spruce is so pretty. Now I also added some score tape to the sides of my hill and folded along the score lines. I'm just wiggling it in there. And once I'm happy with the placement, I will just close the card onto itself to adhere the score tape. Again, using a bone folder to make sure the adhesive sticks. And there we go. Uh, now I decided to stamp the sentiment onto the banner so that that's done. I'm just using the Happy Easter from the Easter Egg Hunt by Hello Bluebird. And I'm heat embossing it with Ranger Silver Embossing Powder. Now it's time to decorate the inside of my shadow box. I already placed down the tree trunk and the tree top. And now I'm just adding in all of the elements using liquid glue. And I'm just holding them in place for a little bit of time for my reverse tweezers. Just so that they have some time to dry down. Also reusing in between my, my blender pen where I realized that I colored over the lines, which I tend to do a lot. Now adding my second bunny. It is a bit fiddly to add them because you don't quite know how to hold them down because you don't want to mess up the mechanism, but with the reverse tweezers or just regular tweezers it really does work well. I realized that I didn't add the like grassy bits to the inside, so I decided to give it a go and stamp them in now. Also using cracked pistachio distress oxide. And now adding my third bunny. I knew I wanted the fairy up top, so I did place her in to see the placement of my other bunny, because I wanted her to be in between the center bunny and the left one. I'm gluing the paintbrush to the fairy and then placing her inside the seam just so the show that she's right in between there now I'm adding the flowers just behind the bunnies I didn't want it to be too crowded but I did think that they added something nice to you know, the scene just behind there.
the second bunch of flowers is barely visible just behind the bunny, but I do really like how that looks. Now I'm adding in the butterfly up at, at the top. And now it's time to place the Easter eggs around the tree trunk, just so that it looks that they already did, did a bunch of coloring on those. Just placing down the third of the eggs. Sorry, my head keeps popping in there. Now, all that's left to do for the inside is add my banner. And now I'm using liquid glue to add the front of the card. Just let it dry for a second. And now I'm adding the remaining Easter eggs to the front, just so that it gets more of an Easter vibe. And there we go. That finishes off my card for today. I had a lot of fun making this one. It did turn out quite a bit different than I'd originally planned because as you could see, I did have a lot more images that I wanted to use, but there was no room. But this is the finished card. I really like how it turned out. I hope you do as well and that you give an inside shadow box card a try because they really are a lot of fun to make. Here you can also see the dimension that the uh, glitter gloss adds and you can also see a little bit of the shine of the stickles that I added to the inside of the bucket and the little paint brushes Thank you so much for watching today. I Hope you're all staying safe and healthy during this really difficult time and that you know some crafty videos may bring a tiny bit of joy On screen I will link to two more videos that may interest you have a wonderful day. Bye!